Welcome everyone to this next episode on SAP Datasphere Overview Training on YouTube with me Anubhav on anubhavtrainings.com. In the last session we talk about will SAP BW for HANA be completely replaced by SAP Datasphere? In our today's session we are going to discuss about an architecture overview of SAP Datasphere. So what are the key components of SAP Datasphere and how it is going to help your organization to provide the core capabilities of business warehousing in the cloud. Before we start, please feel free to like, share, subscribe this channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon so you will get notified for more free videos once we upload it on our channel. Having said that, let's get started with an architecture overview. All right. So what is the architecture of SAP Datasphere? So this is the broad architecture overview. It is taken from the same uh, same BTP slide. Yes. So what is the architecture of SAP Datasphere product? So first at the bottom you can see we have the data sources. You can connect to Datasphere from cloud sources, on-premise sources or external APIs. Let's say there is a Microsoft Azure system where you have some data kept and they are offering some APIs for you to consume this data. So you can take any of these sources as data sources for your BW system. Then you start with integration, operation, manage and use. So in the integration option, you can use existing business content offered by SAP and its partners. You have integration with in-memory database called HANA Cloud where you can use in-memory HANA Cloud capabilities including data lakes and virtual data access and replication. Then you have data marketplace from where you can also take the data like currency exchange rates or other uh, other data set which is available on open market. You can also use replication flows and data flows to bring in the data from your external SAP systems and SAP data intelligence. Along with that you can utilize the core features of SAP BTP platform. Then we have space management where how do you operate the data sphere. So you have space management first of all which allows a isolation of your departmental data across different departments. We have administration and security where an administrator can manage the quotas how much each department is allowed to store allowed to manage allowed to browse through the catalogs and then we have the BW bridge to basically replicate the metadata from your existing BW system into the new world of data sphere. Then you can manage catalogs where you can publish your content to the fellow colleagues of within your team. If you build something interesting and important you can basically uh, publish it for other colleagues to look at and reuse that. Then we have business modeling service where you can model your data, data models to be able to offer it for the consumption. On top we also have data modeling services where you can create new tables, replication flows, data flows, <coughs> data jobs, a lot of these things you can do with the data modeling services. On top of it we have SAP Analytic Cloud native integration. SAP Analytic Cloud native integration is what we have typically when it comes to consuming your data. This is where you can finally reuse your data or you can do external consumption where you can have tools like uh, for example uh, Microsoft Power BI or Salesforce Tableau or even in Excel file you can consume this data. So that is about our data sphere architecture. Now let's look at developers view or the bird's eye view. How do you develop when we go deep inside it? How do you actually develop when you want to start using the solution the data sphere solution? What is the traditional approach a developer would take? before developing or in, in a way to develop the the uh, the objects in data sphere. So first of all you have on-premise sources like S4 HANA, BW4 HANA, SAP BW and ECC system and then you can use additional data adapters to provision your data to data sphere. You can see the data sphere is offered on top of SAP BTP. So BTP is the platform the underlying infrastructure on top of it data sphere is offered. In fact, Analytics Cloud is also offered on top of BTP platform. So when you come to Datasphere, this is the logo of Datasphere you can see. So when it comes to Datasphere, you start with catalog. So first you browse the catalog to look at 
if there is a requirement which you're trying to build, it's already built by somebody else in your team which you can reuse. On top of it, you can browse the business content, the content offered by SAP or by SAP partners where you have already followed industry best practices. So you can leverage and reuse and browse this content and download this content in your system, connect it with your own data sources and then reuse it. You can go to open data marketplace where you can browse the the different data 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 providers who are providing open data sources for you like currency conversion or let's say exchange rates or product price or CPI data core inflation data or stock prices which you can reuse then you can configure your own data layer in the data layer you start building database tables graphical views SQL views basically you create your data foundation this is mainly for technical users developers like you and me who will build the data foundation for the company this layer focuses more about building the data and it's uh, it's it, it's the core information like org data dimension data fact data configuring all the data in the system you can leverage the apis you can reuse the sharing of data across spaces and you can also have connectivity with third party tools for example microsoft azure can act like a third party tool and then you can use the data provisioning agents to migrate this data to SAP data sphere on top of it you will do business layer modeling this is where you will define business semantics you will do marking of what is your measure what is your dimension you will configure hierarchies you will create uh, business add some business semantics let's say a data type is a date data type email data type Yes, or this data data type is associated to a hierarchical model which is uh, which is a master data so all these associations and business semantic modeling you will do in the business layer this is predominantly used by business users for consumption point of view and finally you have the consumption where you can consume it both for analytic purpose as well as planning purpose so sap analytic cloud also offer planning pro uh, pl planning proposition so you can utilize the data to also do the planning all right so thank you so much for all of you for attending today's session on the topic of sap data sphere as usual please feel free to subscribe the complete training end to end on sap data sphere sap analytics cloud sap btp ui5 fury or any other technical skill set which you would want to upgrade in this new world of cloud so do not forget to visit www.anubhavtrainings.com. Also shoot us an email on contact at anubhavtrainings.com for any of the requirement regarding the technical training in the space of SAP. With that, Anubhav signing out. Once again, thank you so much and I will see you in my next episode.